What's up guys? I want to show you a new acquisition that I recently got. This is a Swiss Army Knife Huntsman 2. And I've got a uh, kind of a customized case for it. And a lanyard here. This case, I don't know what it was originally for. I picked it up at a thrift store for like a dollar. But the Swiss Army Knife fits perfectly in it. Uh, it's a cool case. It It's leather. It's stitched really well. You open it up, it has a mirror built into it. So you could use that for kind of like a signal mirror or something. It's a little scratched up, but this is a secondhand purchase, so you have to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, it, it has an interesting way of, full, of closing. It's Velcro. And this is basically the belt loop itself. So you can weave that into your belt right here. Um, the way I don't really wear a belt too often, so I actually, instead of putting this vertical on a belt, I'll stick it through the loop. I'll slide this in through the loop of my pants and then just kind of do like a horizontal carry. And it closes pretty tight. It does kind of shift a little one way every once in a while. So, um, but it's very concealable and it just kind of fits right on my hip so I can carry it around. Um, there's a reason that I got this. Uh, I talked about this in another video, but there's been some events recently where some hikers have or some outdoors uh, people have uh, come up uh, missing and, and died out in the wilderness um, from, among other things, a lack of uh, preparation um, and tools and resources and such. So it kind of got me thinking I need to have something on me whenever I'm out some type of tool or kit that I could use in an emergency. So a Swiss Army knife is a great tool. Um, it's very similar to like a, a Leatherman type multi-tool um, as far as having numerous different tools that you can use all in one. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more compact. So that's why I went with the Swiss Army. I got a great deal on this too. So we'll take the knife out. It just slides out of this pouch. That's what that looks like. Um, I've recently got into making paracord stuff. So bracelets like the one I'm wearing. So I made this lanyard. Uh, this is really only about five feet of paracord. Uh, but you just undo the top part, unravel it, and you've got five feet of cord there. Uh, it can also be used, let's say, we are opening up the blade. You can use that as part of the handle, since I have big hands, and that will kind of fill in on the handle, give you a little more grip there. Or if you want to kind of choke down on it. You like start to drop it or something. You you have something to grip onto. So that's why I have that lanyard on there. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go through each each and every tool, but I I do want to talk about the knife itself. So I got this on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Um, this one is, as far as I'm concerned, for price, the amount of tools that you get the size and weight, this is the ideal pocket knife. Um, and Swiss Army knife, multi-tool, whatever uh, you want to classify it as. There is another one, The this is the Huntsman 2. There is the regular Huntsman. The only difference is this has a corkscrew, whereas on the Huntsman, the corkscrew has been replaced with a Phillips screwdriver. The problem with that is that a screwdriver coming off this way 
is going to be limited because when you're screwing generally you would want it to come off of the end because you might not have the the turn radius uh, due to whatever you're screwing or objects around it so in some cases if it's just an open screw on something yeah that would work to have it like this otherwise you may find yourself with a Phillips screwdriver but not able to rotate it due to the shape of the tool. Uh, other models they have obviously put them on the end like uh, this one still has a screwdriver it's just a flat head so you've got a little one there and then you've got another one here. Now those do fold off of the ends. It's a bottle opener and a thread stripper wire stripper but that also doubles for a screwdriver um, you know you could probably get away with undoing a Phillips maybe with this one if you had to in a pinch a Phillips is nice to have there's a lot of those types of screws out there but unfortunately the way this one is designed it doesn't have it and if you do want it you have to have it in the middle which is kind of undesirable um, what I also like about this particular model is it has scissors and a saw so let's get those out the saw is great it really is very sharp see all those teeth on it and they don't go all the way to the end because when you pull it out you need a little bit of flat area to open the tool without cutting yourself so you've only got a few inches of cutting surface now I've seen some people try to cut through limbs with these this honestly guys is more for fine tasks for notching out sticks um, cutting small things in a pinch yeah you could cut a bigger limb um, but keep in mind this cuts by moving back and forth so you want what you're cutting to probably be about half the, the width of this or less so you're really only talking like an inch and a half thick sticks that you're going to be cutting if you had to because you got to saw back and forth if you cut something three inches thick you're going to be sawing and coming off the the branch or whatever so but you know a saw just an excellent small pocket saw to, to have on your person um, the scissors was probably the first thing I used when I had this out I had a plant at work that I was able to uh, trim up these scissors and these are actually high quality uh, scissors as far as for this type of design metals really thick it's good quality metal they're sharp they don't rattle see it's pretty thick it's got the spring on there to give you the tension so that is a nice tool along with the uh, saw. Um, so I would say the main benefits of this uses are going to be your blades. And we also have the small blade in addition to the big blade I showed earlier. Secondary blade. That I like to use for opening packages and, and things. And the big blade, you know, that's that's your blade that's your knife so I haven't necessarily been a big fan of the Swiss Army style blade but you know it's a typical pocket knife uh, blade I've gotten it pretty sharp they don't come super sharp but I got a pretty good edge on it so it's gonna cut some stuff if I need it to um, it doesn't really lock. I mean, it's just a folding knife like a pocket knife, so it doesn't lock into place. But once it's extended and open, it seems pretty secure. 
so it it's not going to fold over on you with with uh, you know light to moderate use. So what I like the tools I like the saw, the scissors, the knives, uh, tweezers. Tweezers are a good uh, thing to uh, have in your uh, your toolkit. These aren't obviously the best type of uh, tweezers, but they do work. So removing splinters, thorns, you have that on you. You're doing you know, something with really small screws. You've got the tweezers there. Uh, the toothpick, you know, that's just kind of a heard somebody say the toothpick's best uh, use is going to be picking out lint and things and cleaning the tool itself with it as opposed to sticking it in your mouth and shoving it back in there so germs can grow uh, so I have to agree with that um, so really you've got those four tweezers, knife, scissors there are two knives but technically that would be five but scissors and then the saw uh, those those are the things that I would see you using frequently, and again, that's five different tools. So that's a lot of different options you have. Uh, this they call it the reamer. It's basically an awl, uh, kind of pointy, poke holes through stuff. You can thread things as well. Um, it's got this interesting sort of almost like a a groove on the side or on, on kind of on the bottom and what that does it's it's kind of like sharp on the side a little bit and I've heard that you can actually use that on a ferrule rod to to get sparks so nothing else really on this tool unless you wanted to like use the I don't know maybe the can opener we'll look at that but that one definitely worked for for getting sparks. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think this will work. The can opener is real sharp because again that's got to cut through metal. So you might be able to take that, even though it's curved, and get yourself a you know some friction there on a ferrule rod. So that might work too. But you at least have one or two options for getting sparks off a ferrule rod. Unfortunately, I don't have a ferrule rod with this. Um, I'm looking into doing that. Um, maybe I could put something else, you know, put it in the lanyard or something. I'm not sure. It would be nice to have a combustion option there. Uh, so that all a reamer, that's kind of a cool little tool. I could see myself using that in certain circumstances. I've used it before on my Leatherman for various projects. Uh, and you've got this tool, which uh, I forget what it's called, but it's it's essentially a hook. And they say they use that for carrying stuff, like carrying parcels or whatever. I, I suppose you could do that. I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just, instead of hanging it from here, just loop it around the, the thing itself and then carry that. I don't know. But what I would use this for is for cinching down cordage. You loop, loop that on there, pull it tight so you're not pulling with your hands. So that, that's a nice tool. Um, if you had a cord tied around something like a tree and you, you need, or I don't even know what, but any, any object really, and you need to kind of get in there and loop on it to pull it out a little this is the type of tool you would use. I mean, it's basically a, a metal hook. So it's not really pointed or sharp, but it's a, it's a good hook. Uh, I think we basically looked at everything. Yeah, so we did the scissors, knife, um, small knife, can opener, bottle opener, flathead screwdrivers, saw, um, your corkscrew that's uh, an interesting tool uh, I've heard somebody say that that makes it look like a gentleman's uh, tool or give, makes it more elegant 
And I, I can see why they say that. I mean, it's a corkscrew. It's a cool-looking shape, cool tool. Um, you, it's for wine bottles, so... <laughs> I don't know the, the practicality of that. Um, how often somebody would you be needing this for to open wine bottles, particularly if this was in a survival or wilderness or any type of situation like that. Um, I've also found some other ways to open wine bottles without a corkscrew at all. You can use heat, you can actually bang them and the pressure will knock the cork out. It's kind of a, a weird thing, but I've seen it done. Uh, I didn't know how you do this at first because I'm used to uh, like a wine key where it has the, the lever and then you stick it in and then screw it in and then you kind of like wedge the lever and then pull it out. But basically how you do this, you just screw it in all the way and then you choke up on the bottle and you kind of do one of these jobs where you're using your hand to kind of pull one end up and that'll slowly work the cork out. So you don't just drill this in and then yank it. That's not how that works. That's kind of what I used to think, but found out the correct way to do that. So I don't anticipate myself using this because anywhere there is wine, there's going to be a wine bottle opener of some kind. Um, but if not, I have that. They say you can use that to undo knots and cord I don't know if that would be more hassle than it's worth or how to actually go about doing that effectively. Uh, so the last thing on this, um, you just kind of just look at the size too. It's about as thick as it is um, wide. So that dimension, it's about the same. You don't have this big, fat, weird shaped, heavy Swiss Army knife. It's a very modest size very what I consider you know normal um, it's not too thin it's not too thick it's just perfect for the amount of size that you that you would want to carry um, but the scales so you are probably used to traditional Swiss Army knives they have this is a Victorinox by the way which is basically what all of them are nowadays since they merged with Winger um, but the scales themselves, they had the, uh, the I'm not sure what the term for it is, but it was like the, the slick, uh, glossy scales that, that were like shiny. And the problem with those is they were a bit reflective, or I'm sorry, I mean they were reflective, but they would scratch and mar easily. So they've come up with this style, which is like a matte finish. So... It, it's a little bit darker, the, the hue is a little bit different than the, the glossy red. And I actually like it as far as the way it looks. Um, I think the other ones had a little more tack to the grip. Because you know how uh, things that are kind of, they look slick, but when you grab them, you actually kind of get a good purchase. I don't know if it's the moisture in your hand and it being plastic, but it really, it, it like, I guess it like that your, your finger and the surface kind of get a lot of uh, grip or I'm not really sure friction, I guess it would be. So you, you would get a good grip on those. This one, because it's a mat, it, it's kind of it's real smooth um, and it's not as grippy I guess you would say it's kind of hard to describe I don't that that's a little bit of a drawback but I like just the look of it and the fact that it doesn't scratch easily so much and it's kind of an improved design that I don't mind that it's maybe not quite as uh, sure in your hand due to these being a little bit slicker than the others. So, and again, I've got this lanyard that can help me to grip it. So, I mean, I'm not really worried about it sliding out of my hand, but I would say that with these new scales, if there was a drawback, that's